How are you? Welcome to our new series of Christmas, The Gifts of Christmas. Uh, I think it's going to be a great series. I'm super excited about it. If you're new with us, uh, thank you for coming. If you're joining online, we're glad that you're part of our, ser our service today. We are going to be looking at uh, Christmas as we always do. But you know, one of the things I love about this year is... It's the end of 2020. I mean, it's not been the easiest year, so it's something really to look forward to because there's a lot of, a lot of great uh, things that go into the Christmas holiday. I think for a lot of people, it's their, it's their favorite holiday. There's a lot of reasons to, to have it as your favorite. I was thinking of some of the things that I like about uh, Christmas or people I know, uh, the, the cold weather, the fact that you can, if it snows or snows around that time, you can, you know, do all of the you know, snowball fights and hot chocolate and have a fire and read a book. And I guess you can read a book anytime, right? But it sounds better if you're near a fire and it's cold outside. Uh, then decorations. Don't you love the decorations up here? It's some amazing decorations. We put them in our homes. Lights. Of course, I love lights, especially like driving at night at the oceanfront or town center. Uh, some, some pretty cool lights. Christmas trees, of course, have great lights. And Christmas trees are cool. You know, and the peppermint sticks on them and all the amazing food. People come out of the woodwork. She had no idea that they could do anything at home. And all of a sudden, they're, you know, have these, these great dishes and Christmas cookies cooking in the oven. And that just the aroma of that. Scented candles. Uh, you have Christmas songs, of course, right? Christmas uh, carols. We're going to have all Christmas carols and the candlelight. Uh, at our five Christmas Eve services. We're doing five services like that, uh, partly because we want to make sure everybody's got plenty of room. Uh, you're, not, you're not not on top of each other. Uh, and then you have, there's Christmas movies, right? Sharon and I have already watched uh, this year. It was last week we watched the, Chris, uh, the Christmas Carol, two of them in the black and white. I didn't even know there was two different black and white ones, but then after we compared and decided which one was best, it, but, you know, I mean, the Christmas movies are cool. And in our home, another, a whole other genre of Christmas movies, not just all the classics and all the ones that, you know, the blockbusters, but we also have the Hallmark Channel on 24-7. So, um, I mean, I hear it from another room, so I'm just kind of reporting in, you know. It sounds like somebody's enjoying that quite a bit. <laughs> There's also uh, Mistletoe. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're like looking for some love, you know, just hang that up there, wink, wink, right? And there's this great quality time to be with each other and hang out. And people often carve out a little more time and go out of their way to be with, uh, with each other. And then, of course, the, you know, the, the Christmas gifts. Now, of course, there's shopping that goes into that. Some of you go, yeah, man, I love shopping. Uh, others not so much, but hey, the gifts are cool, right? The giving and exchanging of gifts, that is a cool part of, of Christmas. And it's really a big, it's a bedrock of Christmas, because if you look at the first Christmas, you see God giving a gift to us. That's really what Christmas is about. It's certainly uh, God was the initiator in the whole gift giving thing. And I love it when a gift is a gift of love. Because, you know, there's some gifts you just, you give a gift just because you have to, right? Other gifts, you get it, and you open it up, and you go, man, this, somebody really thought about this. I mean, they just kind of poured themselves into it. It's a gift of love. In fact, 
the intrinsic value of a gift might actually be nothing. And it can be an amazing gift. I had that happen when my kids were young. My, uh, one of them was four, and he loved, he was real creative. He was always outside playing with sticks, building stuff. Well, one year, he gathered his best sticks, you know, sorted them out. These are the best ones, and wrapped them up and gave me that as a, as a Christmas gift. Open it up, it sticks. Now, intrinsic value of some sticks Pretty low, right? But it was my best gift that year. And probably one, it's one of my all-time best gifts. Here I remember it years later. Because it's a gift of love. When we get a gift of love, it resonates. It's, there's something powerful about it. And that's what God did when he gave us Jesus. Jesus is God's gift of love uh, to us. And so we're, I want to look at that. Four things that we uh, can remind ourselves during Christmas that that uh, is real uh, that really is the message of Christmas. One is we know that God, God's love, we know God's love because Jesus came to earth. I mean, God kind of reached out to us earthlings and said, hey, you matter. You matter. And he, and he, and he wanted to tell us that through his son, Jesus Christ, through his life, through his birth, through his life, his message. The, you read the gospels, you hear over and over, you matter. You matter. You go, Andy, I've heard that. You, you say that all the time. Well, listen, the world is saying the opposite. You don't matter. Your life doesn't matter. When you're gone, it doesn't matter. I mean, we get bombarded constantly with a different message. But God continually says, you matter. You matter to him. And that certainly is the message of Christmas. She, referring to Mary, will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. That's what Christmas is about. It's not about Santa. It's about a Savior. It's not about jingle bells. It's about Jesus. And the, the, the reason for this season, you've heard that, is Jesus. But really the reason for the season is you. God cared about you. If you didn't need a Savior, he wouldn't have gone to all the effort to send a Savior. But he knew that you needed that. And all of us did. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, and that means God with us, God here with us. Now, it's really quite phenomenal that God comes, visits us, and comes in the form of a baby, because honestly, I don't think that's what I would have done. If I was God, I would have done it differently. I'm just telling you. I mean, I I would have like thought, okay, um, it's... I'm coming in hot, I'm coming in big, you know, and, I, you know, probably Super Bowl, you know, at halftime, get all of the biggest, you know, the, all the world leaders up on the 50-yard line, they should be bringing some big gifts, you know, cough up some big bucks, you know, and, and I'm going to show up with lightning and, and pizzazz and all this, you know, great, you know, fireworks in the sky, and that's not what God did. God comes as a baby, because he didn't want to scare us or freak us out. He wanted wanted to save us, and we certainly can relate to a baby. We all came into the world that way. And then he was not just came into the world as a baby, but in a very humble way, in a little teeny village, and, you know, in in very uh, humble beginnings, was a carpenter, a Palestinian Jew. Carpenter just worked with his hands, just a, a normal guy that we could relate to. And then live the life that he did. It's quite remarkable. And so God comes and he communicates to us this message of love through Christ. And and, and to tell us that we matter. God says, you matter to him. Now, it's interesting when it comes to Christmas. If you've had a good year, then Christmas is kind of like, well, this is so awesome. I love Christmas. But if you've had a difficult year, you've lost somebody you're in a difficult place financially, you're in a difficult place emotionally, maybe you're depressed, you thought you'd be in a different place by now, you thought you'd be married by now, you thought your marriage would be better but, you know, than it is, and, and uh, you know, you just, then Christmas sometimes kind of accentuates that. Some people refer to Christmas as the pencil sharpener of the emotions. It kind of just like accentuates that if we're in pain. And, and, and the the news, the good news of Christ is when he came, 
he also, as a human, when he grew up as a baby, as a human, experienced all of the same challenges that we experienced. He was lonely. He, he had all the same temptations, all the same challenges that we experience so that we can, we can know God cares, that God can relate to us. And he's not just some distant deity out there. That's the message. It's an awesome, amazing message of Christmas. Here's a great mess, uh, Christmas uh, passage. Jesus Christ, who, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid them aside to go become a human, to become born in a feeding trough, all the things he did, put him aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And so he comes in, and the mo- it's really a disguise. He comes in a way that none of us would ever imagine, and certainly most of them didn't imagine it coming happening like that. So it was a really surprise to a lot of people. The shepherds were surprised, the wise men. There's a lot of people, wow, look at what God did. We didn't see it coming quite like that, but it certainly is a message of good news for us. So we know God's love by Jesus coming to earth. Number two, Jesus showed us what God is like. Jesus shows us what God is like. You can only know God through nature in certain ways. There are certainly some things you can learn about God by looking at nature. You're looking at the universe, the galaxies, the earth, and and how he created people. You can certainly see that God is very creative. I mean, created the, the whole universe and all the God loves beauty. That's another thing we know about him. And he's very powerful. You look at the sun and all the amazing things that are there. He loves variety. Look at how all the animals and how different we all are. He's very organized all the way down to the smallest particle. You just see scientists are discovering stuff all of the time. He's very, very organized. But you don't learn that God is loving except through Christ. Jesus Christ demonstrated that he's loving. You don't, you don't know that God is forgiving except through Jesus Christ coming and sharing that about us, about him. You don't know that God loves you through nature. You learn that through Christ. And that's the message of Christmas, that Jesus came to, um, to show us what God is like. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So you certainly have this combination of some natural phenomena happening, but also Jesus came in order to communicate personally with us to tell us that God loves us. Things that nature, again, wouldn't necessarily tell you that, you know, that nature doesn't tell us that God is is loving and forgiving and redeeming. God loves to redeem us. This is what the message of the gospel is. Redemption is when you take something that has little or no value and you give it value. And God, that's what it means when he says he redeems us. He takes something that, especially like our past and what we bring to the table in this equation, and we think, well, it's not a whole lot, God. And he goes, well, I'll take that. I'm going to make something valuable out of it. That's what he does. And that's really a message of love when he, how do you know that God loves you? Well, because love is more than just words. And Jesus demonstrated that on the cross. And God demonstrated that by sending Jesus to earth. I mean, sometimes we get hoodwinked by people, right? They tell us they love us, and then we think they do, only to find out their definition of love is totally different than ours, you know? How do you know somebody loves you? Well, it's backed up by actions. It's, you know, somebody's willing to sacrifice their time for you. They'll sit with you when you're grieving. They'll, they'll, they'll be with you when you're processing difficult things in your life. They'll help you out and sacrifice financially when you're in a difficult place uh, in your life financially. Uh, parents will stay up and sacrifice sleep, stay up all night long with their kids that when they're sick and in, or having you know nightmares or whatever. Why? Because they love them. That's a demonstration. Ultimately, people will even lay down their lives, a great form of sacrifice to show, I care, I love you, which is what God did. But that's how we ultimately know that God loves us because it wasn't just words, it's th- and it was words, but it was also God demonstrating, sacrificing, coming, and living the life, Shane, that he loves you, that God loves you. And God says, I, I forgive you, I love you, I want to redeem you. 
Because of Christmas, we know that God's love because of Jesus coming to earth. Jesus showed us what God is like. Number three, we can know God in a personal and life-changing way. That's the message of Christmas. Not just a, a, a deity out there, a spiritual being, but he's a living God who wants to have a personal, life-changing relationship with you. He cares about you. Notice this verse here. It says, today in the town of, of David, a Savior has been born to you. So God came and brought a Savior because we needed a Savior. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And so this is the gift that God gives us is Jesus Christ. I mean, there's all the gift giving. You know, it's interesting to me, and it's ironic, certainly, that some people go Christmas after Christmas opening up gifts, love the whole gift-giving thing, but never open up the most important gift of all, which is the gift that God gave us, Jesus Christ, inviting him into your life, having Christ come into your heart and, 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 and let the joy of the Lord and the peace of Christ and, the, and all the, the strength that God gives us, all of the gifts that God wants to give you, that's really the ultimate gift. And so you, a per, let me ask you a personal question. How many more Christmases are you going to go through without opening up God's gift to you? And you might be online, you might be here, where you're just, you know, you're kind of watching, standing on the sidelines, and you know you're far from God, you know you don't have a personal relationship with God, and that's what Christmas is about. So I invite you to do that, because a gift, if I just leave a gift, no matter how nice it is, under the tree and I don't open it, it's, it's worthless, right? It's meaningless. It doesn't matter anything to me if I don't if I don't open it a number of years ago when Sharon and I got married my oldest brother gave us a wedding gift you know people give toasters and all. well he gave he gave us a, a hair blow dryer it was a blow dryer <laughs> open it up and I think well I already have one you know so I'm not I guess I'll just put it aside maybe I'll, when, when this one dies I don't know how often a blow dryer dies but when it dies I'm set you know I'm, I'm ready to go so I put it in the closet. Well, it was years. And, you know, my blow dryers actually last a while. I don't know if you discovered that. But they, it was years later. And over the years, we had a number of, of uh, events come up where we needed a gift and we didn't have one. I'd tell Sharon, you know, why don't we just re-gift that, you know, that hair blow dryer. But then that's kind of, you know, that's a weird gift to give somebody on their birthday, right? <laughs> you know, you just, they open it up. So, and it was for that reason, it never really got regifted. It just sat there year after year. Finally, finally, our hair blow dryer dies. I've been waiting forever, you know. I, I, hey, Sharon, this is the opportunity. We've been waiting. So I run, I, you know, open it up. It's not a blow dryer. He had, he had used the box, but inside he, he had all of these freshly ground gourmet coffees which were worthless now. <laughs> I just kind of threw them all out, you know, well, what do you do? Guess I should have opened that. Of course, he could have wrote on it, you know, so you check inside, but either way, I didn't open it. A gift that's unopened is worthless, right? You just leave it there, and that's God's gift to you is waiting to be opened, where you open it up and you say, I want what God has for me. Because if I just look at it, if I keep it at a distance, it does me no good. It says, because you belong to Jesus Christ, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. This is a gift. Some people are looking for peace all the time, trying to buy their way, trying to drink their way into peace. God has it for you. He says that this peace will control the way you think and you feel it's going to affect your life. It's going to change your life. Now, in 2021, together as a church, we are going to step out of some of the things that have been holding us back from really living the life God has for us. And we're going to do that together, beginning the very first week of January in a series called Breaking Free. And we're going to do it together. We have a study together. We're going to do a sermon series. We also, over that, we always do 21 days of prayer and fasting. And that's, so we're going to encourage you to be thinking about something you can fast from. But just really kind of setting our sights, 2021, 
we're going, we're going to go all in. We're going to serve the Lord, and God's going to do some amazing things. And so I wanted to give you a preview about that because I want you to be thinking about that, anticipating that, believing God's going to do something in your life to set you free from something that's keeping you from the kind of life that God has for you. And so breaking free, I hope that you'll come and be part of that. So we can know that God in a personal, life-changing way. And then we enjoy love and support uh, through the, our new family. God gives us a spiritual family. He, 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 you get adopted into a spiritual family that he has for you because he loves you. He knows you need that. We all need that. Because of his love, God's unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his family own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. And so when you come to Christ, he puts you in a family. That's awesome. It's terrific to be part of God's family. Now, not everybody is. That's because not everybody is a child of God. Go, not everybody's a child of God? No. Not everybody is created by God. God never created somebody he didn't have a plan for. God never created somebody he didn't love. God never created somebody that Jesus didn't die for. God never created somebody that he didn't want a personal relationship with. But you have to choose that. You have to step into that and say, I want that in my life. And he talks about it being adopted. You get adopted in, which is a term of love. But it's a decision that you have to make. When I was born physically, I was, I was, I was born into the human race. It wasn't, I didn't have any, there's no decision about it. I mean, I just, I became part of the human race. But when somebody said, hey, I want that kid, and they took me home, I became part of the family. So we all get born into the human race, but you become in the family through a decision. Somebody says, I want you. I want you. And that's how we get into the family of God. We make a decision. We go, I want to follow Christ. I want to be part of what God's doing. And, and he invites you into this, into this family. Here's what I want you to know. It's not enough just to believe in Jesus. You need to belong to his family. Why? Well, look at what the Bible says. It says that family is the church of the living God. The church of the living God. Stop right there before we read the rest of it. You see, the, that's God's design for the church, is that we're the church of the living God. Not a business. The church is not a business. The church is not an organization. The church is not a club. I know some churches act like a club, or some churches act like a business, some churches act like an organization, but that is not God's design. God's design is that we are a family. That's what the church is. We're a spiritual family. Why? Because we get support and a foundation, the support and foundation of the truth. Now, in the Middle Atlantic region, we get hurricanes almost every year. Some of them are really bad, and all the rains come, and the winds, and things get uprooted and torn down. We know the importance of a support and a foundation. We need that. We need that, the support and the foundation. And this has been a trying year. I mean, it's kind of hurricane. It's a hurricane year in all kinds of ways. And so really it's, for many of us, probably all of us, we've, we've been tested what we're made of, what, 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 you know, what, what we need in life to really make it. And the church is vital. Now I know that with COVID, a number of governors deemed the church non-essential. That's non-essential. You go, yeah, well, they were doing that because of the virus. Well, you know, there's plenty of people that really believe that. The church is non-essential. And the truth is we need the church. We need, we're a spiritual family where we support one another. We help each other, particularly through challenging times. And so God is calling you. Some of you, you've, you've never put your faith in Christ, and God's calling you to do that. And I want you to know that part of that means you get adopted into a spiritual family, and that's good news, a loving family. And others of you, you have made a decision for Christ, but you have not recognized, hey, I need my spiritual family and they need me we're in this together or maybe that's becoming more obvious to you through this last year but either way i invite you to come be part of the vineyard family we'd love to have you here that's what we do growth track we do it every every week every month 
first weekend of the month. We always do step one. That's this weekend. Step one's where we just talk about the vision of the church. Sharon and I teach it, and we'd love to have you in there. If you've not taken growth track and you're here part of our Virginia Beach campus, I understand the online campus, we don't provide that at this time, but I, w- I want you in there. Come on. It's only about 50 minutes long. Right after the service, we'll feed you. We'll watch your kids. We want to we wanna help you take that step and, and discover the power, the support, and the foundation of a spiritual family. We, it's important. They're needed. We need our spiritual family. Here's this last verse. says, a different spiritual gift is given to each of us in God's family. He says that we have gifts, and you have gifts that somebody else needs that they don't have. They have gifts somebody else needs that they don't have. I have gifts that you need that you don't have. I mean, we, we help one another. So we can help each other for the common good. God says that's what the spiritual family is all about. Now, in our church, Sharon and I started this church 27 years ago. Love this church. We have some amazing things that happen in this church. I love the worship. I mean, I, I love some of the outreaches we do on Serve Day. And, uh, you know, it's a, uh, God's given us this wonderful building. But listen, all those things are not as nearly as important as the one thing that's most important above all. If nothing else happens, if we're not known for anything else but one thing, it would be I want us to be known as a community of love. People that love each other, that care for each other. That's If, if we only get that one thing right, you know what? In God's book, we win. So let's, we, we, we want to pursue that. God's a God of love. He wants our he wants our spiritual family to be f- built on love, supporting one another, being a foundation for each other. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Holy Spirit, I, I just invite you right now here in this place, also all those who are watching wherever they're at, Lord, that your presence would be there. I pray for those who are uh, in a good place in their life. They're going into Christmas and they're going, hey, this is great and I'm so thankful. That is, a, that is your blessing. All good things come from heaven. And so Lord, we just, we thank you for that. But also I pray for those that are, have had losses, have had difficulties this year. They're going into Christmas. It's going to be more lonely than it was previous. There's some discouragement. There's just uh, some things that they're not, honestly, there's, there's, they're not all looking forward to it all that much. And so, God, I pray for anybody who's in that situation, Lord, that we would look to you to be our source. You really are the reason for the season, and we are because you came for us to communicate how much we matter, how we are loved by you. If you've never received Christ, you've never put your faith in him, or maybe you're far from God, I want to invite you to come home, to open up that gift. Say, yes, I want you in my life. Would you do that? It's not about joining a church. It's about about making it right with God. Right now, just say, God, today, right now, I put my faith in you. Help me to get back on track. Forgive me for my own stubbornness, my own sinfulness. Help me to walk with you. Would you say, God, cleanse me? That's you, got to be your prayer. Just say, God, forgive me, cleanse me, and renew me. I put my faith in Christ. Some of you need to step into that adoption into a spiritual family. You say, God, today I'm going to start really getting involved in the spiritual family you've given. It is essential. It is essential so that I have support and foundation in my life and that I can be used and you can use my spiritual gifts to bless other people. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed to ask Christ in your life, if you have any other prayer requests, please let me know about that. If you're online, there's a place for you in the chat box that comes up, says, I prayed to receive Christ today. Let us know about that. If you're here in the Virginia Beach campus, you can let us know on the Connect card. Just write on there any prayer requests you have, particularly if you prayed 
uh, with me and let me know about that. You can put it in the clear box as you leave today. Now, we do have Growth Track. I certainly hope to see you in there. Growth Track Step 1 right after this service. Would love to have you in there as we uh, as we start to uh, we'll look at what it means to be part of a spiritual family. Also, if you'd like to uh, give and support our church, you know, the reason we give is not because we have to, but because we get to. It's because of what Christ has done in our life. God's poured so much love into our lives. The Bible says, let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. God says, I, that, I'm not interested in that. No, thank you. He says, let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. All because God loves hilarious generosity. I love that. God says, man, we give because what he's done in our lives. It's a way to demonstrate our love to God, to join up with our spiritual family as we proclaim the good news to our community. All right? A couple ways that you can give is... uh, if you're online, it's, there's a give button there for you. If you're on vineyardchurch.com, also you can give through texting 45777 and then just put in VCC in the amount. Thank you for your gifts. It means the world, and we're able to really help the world because of that. Would you stand with me, and we're going to go ahead and uh, sing one last worship song. We'll also have prayer people up here at the end if you'd like to receive prayer. Father, thank you for our opportunity to stand together as a community of faith, Lord, where we, where we proclaim your love and the goodness that you have for us. Lord, I pray that this Christmas series will be one that will help us get our perspective uh, where it needs to be on you in Jesus' name. Amen.